Welcome back, Tech Lead here. Now, what we're doing today is a classic showdown for the top keyboard for programmers in 2020. And so while you've been gone, I've been compiling all of these keyboards for us here. I have about $800 worth of keyboards here, and it's a six of the top rated keyboards that I've found. Let me show you what we've got here and what we'll be comparing today. First up, we have the Logitech G915 keyboard, 10 keyless version. It is using tactile switches, very nice. Then we also have the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition keyboard right over here. And this is also the Tankulous version using linear switches. And then over here in the back, we have the respectable Steel Series Apex Pro using linear switches. We've got the classic Razer Huntsman, which has been my personal daily driver over the past few weeks. And then we also have here the Logitech MX Keys, which is a wireless keyboard well known for office usage. And then as kind of a base, as a control, we also have the Apple Magic Keyboard, which is commonly used across a lot of Facebook Google engineers. So we've got an exciting lineup here. And keyboards should be something that every self-respecting developer should be paying close attention to because the keyboard is the way in which we interact with the world. It is what we use to go out to do battle every day and where our fortunes are made with. And so especially in areas like competitive programming or online interview questions in which people are doing these days, your choice of keyboard will determine your fate. And by the way, none of this is sponsored. I bought all of these keyboards with my own money in order to give a fair and true comparison. So make sure to give the video a like in order to support this type of content. So without further ado, let's get into the keyboards and I'll let you know my thoughts on each one. First up, I know a lot of people, maybe 80 to 90% of Facebook, Google engineers, they're using a standard Apple Magic keyboard. And I just want you to understand that this one, although it works fine okay, it's not going to offer the proper support for your fingers and it's going to slow down your ability to type. Not to mention when I was using this, I was starting to develop carpal tunnel because the key presses, they're so shallow that you're essentially banging your fingers against the desk each time you type on it. And there's no slant, so it's really just not offering enough support. The key presses are so shallow. Not to mention in terms of style. It's really quite plain and boring to look at, isn't it? There's not even backlit keys. You don't have RGB coloring. It's just a standard keyboard. And even though it's functional, it doesn't really excite you when you go sit at your desk each morning. Some of the keys, they're a little bit mushy once you start typing on it too long because the key travel distance is just not sufficient. Now, the fastest I was able to type with this keyboard and I measured my typing speeds across all of these, the maximum speed I had on this was about 150 words per minute. And while that's good, it's not a speed that I can maintain because if I start typing too long, my fingers are going to start to hurt because this keyboard offers little to nothing in terms of support and I'll start getting carpal tunnel syndrome and then I'll be out for a few days to let my fingers rest and recuperate from that. And so long term, in terms of productivity, you could be wanting something with a little bit more support. So moving on, let's take a look at our next keyboard here, which is the Razer Huntsman. So the Razer Huntsman is a classic mechanical keyboard. And this has been my daily driver over the past few weeks. I find I can type about 157 words per minute on this very fast keyboard and very ergonomically good. The keyboard lights up at night in stylish RGB colors and the keys are very clicky. The keys actuate at just 50 gram forces compared to the Apple keyboard, which requires 65 gram forces. And so these keys, they're actually easier and lighter to press, resulting in less strain on your fingers. And so using this keyboard, my fingers just feel comfortable all the time. I don't think I've ever developed carpal tunnel typing on this keyboard, even for long periods of time. So part of the comfort of this keyboard also has to do with the travel height of each key, which is 3.4 millimeters. That's about three times more than the Apple Magic keyboard. So your fingers have a little bit of cushioning, a little bit of travel distance before they hit. So what don't I like about the keyboard? Well, number one, you should know that it is extremely noisy. Which means that if you're working in an office environment, if there's people around you, if you're working from home, or if you're teleconferencing into calls, then this keyboard is just, it's not going to be all that practical. And even if you're the type of person who maybe you like to work in silence, you like to think, then the noisiness of the keys can throw you off a little bit. Also, if you're using this on a Mac, then the lighting capabilities, they're going to be limited because Razer doesn't fully support Mac computers. And then I have to use a program to remap the Alt and Windows keys to Command and Option for Macs. And that program is called Carabiner Elements. I'll link it in the description if you're interested in also getting this set up. And one more thing to note, this keyboard, it tends to be pretty high, so you're going to need a wrist pad to really be able to use it comfortably. So overall, I like this keyboard quite a bit. The Razer Huntsman normally retails for about $150, but recently it's been on sale for like 90 bucks, which makes 
it a great overall value and my budget pick for a top keyboard. But moving on, let's take a look at what other keyboards we've got here. All right, so the next keyboard we have here is the Logitech MX Keys. So this keyboard, it does light up unlike the standard MacBook Pro. And this is essentially Logitech's take on the Apple Magic keyboard. The keys have a little more travel distance. You have slight indents in each key and it overall just feels less mushy when you're typing compared to the Apple Magic keyboard. Not to mention on the back, you have a bit of an incline to help your fingers more easily reach the back rows. You've got backlight and there are function keys for switching among various devices if you have like a phone or tablet that you want to connect this keyboard to. So when I first got this keyboard, I switched out the Razer Huntsman for it because I liked how this keyboard was slimmer, it's wireless, whereas the Huntsman, the mechanical keyboard, it just feels big and clunky, right? Not to mention the Huntsman is wired. And so for the first two weeks, I was really happy about the MX keys and I thought I had found the perfect keyboard until my fingers started to hurt a little bit. And then I started looking into the actuation force necessary for each key. It is 60 gram forces. And so compared to the Razer Huntsman, it's only 50 on this one. And then the Apple Magic keyboard is 65. And so you could say that compared to the Huntsman, these keys require 20% more force on your fingers to press. And so the keys were starting to feel pretty heavy and hard for me after a while. And so especially if you're a programmer, you're using your pinky to press the shift key in order to access these odd symbols to capitalize the letters and function names, variable names, then your fingers are going to start to feel tired after a while. And these keys after a while, they just started feeling very hard to me. And my fingers began to hurt again. So I swapped this out back for the Razer Huntsman. And so that's why the Huntsman had been my daily driver. The other thing is in terms of styling this keyboard, it's not RGB. It's backlit, but you don't get those rainbow colors. And I know that some people out there, they're going to say, well, RGB, come on. Do you really need it? It's just a gimmick, isn't it? Well, you know, think about it. When you go to your desk every single day, doing your daily grind, and you've got some crazy bugs you gotta work on, maybe it's late at night and you're tired, and you just need that little bit of extra boost of inspiration, that confidence that's going to make you feel like a rock star programmer. Well, that's really where RGB comes in, isn't it? And so the question is, how much are you willing to pay for inspiration, for confidence? Which brings us to our next keyboard, the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. So the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition, it is very similar to the classic Razer Huntsman, only with this one, you get linear keys instead of the clicky keys. And so whereas the clicky keys tend to be noisy and they have a click when you press them, the linear keys just go down smoothly and tend to be quieter. The keys just feel really good, really premium. And when I started looking more into it, I realized it's because it's actually using a higher quality type of plastic known as PBT. Comparatively, all of these other keyboards are using the cheaper type of plastic known as ABS. Whereas PBT, there's a slight texture to it and it just feels nice when you touch your finger against it. So with the linear keys, you get extremely fast actuations. And so you would imagine that I would be able to type extremely fast on this. So I did some typing tests and Yes, I could go very fast. I think my top speed on this was just 149 words per minute, which is very good. But at the same time, I was not able to beat my other speeds. And the reason is because I was making so many typos on this. Because it's linear and also because the actuation distance is so low. And so I found these keys to be perhaps too sensitive. Even dropping a lens cap on these keys would register multiple key presses. And so while the high sensitivity of the board may be ideal for gamers, for me, I always felt a bit of fear with the board. Every time I entered the typing test or if I were to go coding on prod, I could not afford to make a typo. And perhaps I'm just not worthy of the board, of the high sensitivity of it, because with this great power, with this great speed in its linear switches, there's also the high chance of making typos as well. And so that brings us to our next board here, which is the Steel Series Apex Pro which is also a linear board, much like the Huntsman Tournament Edition. Although this board, it is not as sensitive, so it solves some of those problems. I found that I could type on this much more reliably without making those typos that I was so scared of making. In fact, using the Apex Pro, I measured my typing speed at a max of 160 words per minute, which has been a personal record for me. So the Apex Pro, it does come with a nice magnetic palm rest. And I would say that of all the keyboards, it is perhaps the most stylish because the RGB colors, it's just the most vibrant and most visible on this keyboard. It literally lights up the whole keyboard and you have an OLED screen in the corner that's customizable with any graphic that you like just to make it feel more your own. 
the switches on the Apex Pro are known as OmniPoint Linear, which means that they're linear switches, but you can also customize at which point they begin to actuate. So you can actually tune the sensitivity of it. If you want it to be extremely sensitive, like the Huntsman Tournament Edition, you can tune it to be like that, or you can set it somewhere in the middle to decrease chances of typos. And especially for Mac users, the Apex Pro is fully supported, so you get full access to the RGB colors, the animations, the designs, the customization on the keyboards and colors to make it really stylish as you like it and to personalize that, unlike for example the Razer Huntsman, which is not fully supported on Mac, and so you're just limited to a standard default cycling of colors there. Now obviously the Huntsman uses clicky keys and the Apex Pro uses linear keys, but other than that, they're pretty similar boards and I would have a hard time making a choice between the two. Now if we take a look at pricing though, the Apex Pro does cost $180 compared to the Huntsman, which is like 90 bucks or so now. So that's one big difference, but with the Apex Pro, you are getting the additional magnetic palm rest. You are getting full support for Mac users, so you get full access to the range of colors, making the Apex Pro perhaps the most stylish board out here. So perhaps that's what you're paying for, style. So what don't I like about the Apex Pro? Well, I found that when I was typing, and especially when I was getting to the higher speeds, I could literally feel the amount of time it took for my fingers to lift off of each key to go to the next key. And so that was slowing me down. And so when I looked more deeply into this, I found that the travel distance of each key on the Apex Pro is the highest at four millimeters. You can compare that to the Huntsman, which is about 3.3 millimeter displacement. And so on the Apex Pro, your fingers have to travel 20% further compared to the Huntsman keyboards. And so this is kind of a trade-off that you need to make. Will the Apex Pro's superior RGB styling with its linear keys inspire your fingers to travel that additional further in order to make up for that? It's a hard choice, but at least for me, I found that I was inspired to break my own personal typing records using the Apex Pro. Which brings us to our final contender. And so this is the Logitech G915 keyboard. So there are a number of notable features about this. Let me introduce this board to you. Number one is to notice that it is quite a slim profile. And actually the key travel distance, compared to the Apex Pro, which is about four millimeters, this has a travel distance of 2.5 millimeters. So the Huntsman was 3.3 millimeter displacement. And so the key travel distance is about half that of a standard mechanical keyboard. And meanwhile, the actuation force required for each key is 50 gram forces, about equivalent to a standard Huntsman keyboard. And so as you might imagine, with a low key travel distance and keys that aren't too hard to press, you can type extremely fast on a board like this. Not to mention these keys, they're neither linear nor clicky. At least in this model I have, they're known as tactile, which is somewhere in between. They're neither too loud while providing some tactile feedback. The G915 also comes in clicky and linear variants. And one interesting thing about this is that it is the only keyboard I have here which is actually wireless while being RGB. And so compared to a standard mechanical keyboard which tends to feel heavier and clunkier, the G915, especially the 10 keyless version like I have here which does not have the numpad, it feels lightweight and portable, something that you could pack in a backpack and go to a cafe if you wanted to. You can also optionally plug in the keyboard and it connects by Bluetooth as well as something known as Lightspeed Wireless but it's supposed to offer faster response times. One of my favorite lighting effects is the lightning effect, which makes it look like there's lightning coming down on your keyboard, helping you code that much faster. And so using this keyboard in a typing test, I found I was actually able to achieve my highest speeds, which was 171 words per minute. And then my next high speed was 167 words per minute, also on the same keyboard. It's just whenever I started typing on this keyboard, I felt that I could go faster on it. And part of that has to do with the low travel distance in which after I press each key, my fingers could glide on over to the next key and that becomes essential, especially at higher speeds of typing. Stylistically, there's a unique brushed metal look on the back. You have a volume control knob, a few media controls, and it's otherwise a low profile keyboard, which means that you don't necessarily even need a wrist pad for this in order to type comfortably on it. If you don't want to clutter up your desk with additional stuff, then you can just use this as is, or if you want to add a slim wrist pad, you can do that as well. And on the back, you have two adjustable heights for angles, and otherwise the wiring is really clean. You just have a single micro USB that you can plug in. It would be better if this was USB-C, but that's how it is. And so there you have it, the G915 mechanical keyboard. 
It's kind of a hybrid between one of these flat keyboards with scissor switches and then the standard traditional mechanical keyboards with taller keys. So what don't I like about this keyboard? Well, if you're to shake it, there's a bit of rattling. So it sounds like you're shaking a bag of jelly beans. And then the price, it comes in at the most expensive at 230 bucks. It's not a keyboard that I really wanted to like. And otherwise, the Logitech G915 keyboard does take it as my pick for the best keyboard for programmers in 2020. Now that said, it is very expensive. And there may be other options here. The Razer Huntsman is my overall best value budget pick keyboard for people out there. It's currently on sale right now. And there may be other excellent keyboards as well, which I haven't quite looked at, like the Razer Black Widow line, their tactile switches. I think those could be very interesting as well. So there you have it, but let me know what some of your favorite keyboards are. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.